Do you marry him? A scornful Lysander. My lord, I am as well to wrath as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. I am the love of previous Hermia. Demetrius, I have vowed it to his head, with love to Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, upon this party, and in cast that man. I must confess that I have heard so much. But, being over full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. For you, fair Hermia, look you arm yourself to fit the fancies of your grandfather's will. Or the law of Athens yields you up to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta. <laughs> With duty and desire, we follow you. Oh! How God, my love? Why is that chick so pale? How strange the rose is there to fade so fast? But like for want of rain, which I can well fatigue them from the tempest of mine eye. I mean, for aught that I could ever read, could never hear by tale of history, the course of true love, to make it run smooth. Oh, spite! Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eye. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt from Athens, is a house for seven days, and she respect me as her only son. Dear gentle Hermia. May I marry thee into that place and shove what you love cannot to see us. If thou loves me, still forth thy father's house tomorrow night. There will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, my Cupid's strongest foe, tomorrow truly will I be with thee. You promise, love. Oh. Look, here comes Helena. God, speak, fair Helena, whither away? Will you be fair and die fair again, unsafe? Demetrius loves your fair, all oh, happy fair. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Only oh, your frowns would teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Yes. Holy Helen, is that fault of mine? None but your beauty would that fall for mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. My Lysander and myself shall fly this place. Oh, Helen, till our marriage will unfold. Tomorrow night, to Hatton's gate, have a device to steal. And there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. There well, sweet play, fellow. Hide out for us. And good luck, Randy. He died in each year. He poor Lysander. We must starve our sight from lovers' food till morrow. Deep it tight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. I swear to him, Demetrius, still on you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how happy some or other son can be! Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyes, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. Oh. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight, and to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence it is a dear expense, but herein need I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. <laughs> company here? You are best to call them generally man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name which is thought fit through all Athens to play our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day. At night, first good, Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Marriage. Our play is the most lamentable comedy and most 
Trueness of Pyramus and Thisbe. Ah, there is the piece of work, I assure you, and the memory. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Uh, yeah, answer as I call you. Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready? Name a part I am for and proceed. Uh, you, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover? Or a tyrant! <laughs> a lover who kills himself most gallant for love. I will ask some tears in the true performing of it. My chief humor is for a tyrant. I can play Eric these rarely. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates and the car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fits. <laughs> this is lost, we now name the rest of the players. Uh, this was Heracles' vein, mm. a tyrant's vein. <laughs> a lover is more condoned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight. It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> Not I, beer cup. <laughs> That's all one. You shall play it in a mask and make your voice as small as you will. And I let me hide my face. Let me play this be too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. This me, this me. Ah, Pyramus, my lover dear. Thy this me, dear, and lady dear. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no. You must play Pyramus and flute. You is me. Well, proceed. Robin Starling the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. And yeah, you must play Thisbe's mother. Mother. Yeah. Uh, uh, Count Stan the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Uh, you, Pyramus's father. <laughs> myself, <laughs> myself, Thisbe's father, and Snuff the joiner, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fit. Have you the lion's heart written? Pray you if it be, give it me for it. I am slow of study. You may play it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Roar. Roar. <laughs> then let me play the lion too. I will roar! Then I will make the duke say, let him roar again! Let him roar again! Hey! <laughs> you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies, and that would make them shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That, that would hang us every mother's son! I grant you, friends! Should you fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. Roar! Roar! You must play no part but fearless! <laughs> <laughs> For Pyramus is a sweet man, a proper man, as one may see on a summer's day, uh, a most lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs <laughs> play Pyramus. <laughs> well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play in? Why? What you will. Ah, masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you uh, to come by tomorrow night. <laughs> and meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight. For if we were to meet in the city, we would be dogged by company, and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw up a list of properties such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. There we will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. Just in your act of Duke so we meet. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Hold her, cut those strings.
tear, and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Ah, farewell, thou log of spirits. We'll be gone. Our queen in all her elves come here anon. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant hath, a lovely boy stolen from the Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling. And jealous Oberon would have that child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild. But she, perforce, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green. I found him clear, or spangled starlight sheen, but they do square. And all their elves will fear, creeping to acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape in making quite, or you are that shrewd and knavish spirit called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he who misleads the maidens of the villagery? Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work and they shall have good luck. Are not you he? Thou speakest. All right, I am that merry wonder of the night. A true fairy, pure Count Oberon. Ill met by moonlight proud, Titania. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy skip hence, I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash wanton, and not I thy lord. Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest steep of India, but that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give them their joy and prosperity. <laughs> How canst thou? Dost for shame, Titania. Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy, and with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore, the winds, piping to us in vain as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every petty river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and through his distemperature we see the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frost fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change, by their increase now knows not which is which. In this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Why should the Tanya cross her over I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child in me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood, when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied in the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and with swimming gait following, for whom then rich with my young squire would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again, as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die, and for her sake I do wear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. 
If not, shun me, and I will spare your hearts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. <laughs> fairy away, we shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way! Shall not from this grove till I torment for this injury. Thy gentle puck, come hither. <laughs> Thou rememberest once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid singing on a dolphin's back, uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song. I remember! That very time I saw thou couldst not, flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid all armed, a certain aim he took, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. Fetch me this flower, the herb I showed thee once, for the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make man or woman madly dote on the next living creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb. I'll put a girdle round the earth in 40 minutes. <laughs> Having once this juice, I'll watch the tongue while she is asleep then drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing she waking looks upon, be it lion, bear, a wolf, or bull, a meddling monkey, or a busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> Ere I remove this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible. I will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, and the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen out of this wood, and here am I, and woe within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you shall not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? <laughs> do I speak you fair? Or rather do I not, in plainest truth, tell you, I do not, nor I cannot, love you. And even for that do I love thee the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, use me as your spaniel, neglect me, lose me, only give me leave to follow you. What worser place can I beg in your love and yet a place of high respect with me than to be used as you use your dog? <laughs> <laughs> Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hand of one that loves you not. All run from me and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. <laughs> Let me go. Or, if thou follows me, do not believe it, I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Aye, in the temple, in the town, in the field, you do me mischief. Why, Demetrius, we cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed as we're made to woo. Ah! I'll follow thee and beg a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, Nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Welcome, Wonder. Hast thou the flower there? Hi. Here it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and nodding violet grows. There sleeps the tiny sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances of delight. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. 
take out some of it and seek through this girl. The sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he spies may be the lady. Thou shalt know him by the Athenian garment he hath on. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so.
oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia where, where she lies, for she hath less than attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not in salt tears, if so, my eyes are often washed than hers. No, no, I am as ugly as a bear, for peace to meet me run away for fear. <laughs> but who is here? Lysander? On the ground? Dead or asleep? I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, away! <laughs> <laughs> It runs to fire I wear for thy sweet soul. Choose care and care now. This just was hard that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Her further word is that bound them to perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with her? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I do repent that tedious moment I would have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who would not change a raven for a doll? Oh, wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? Hmm? Then, <laughs> in your hands that I deserve this scorn. Is it not enough, is it not enough, young man, that I never did nor never can deserve a sweet look? <laughs> but you must follow my insufficiency. I must confess, I thought you wore a more true gentleness. Oh, the lady of one man refused to love another, therefore be abused. <laughs> this is not Hermia. Oh, Hermia, sleep down there. It never may star come license in here. All my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. <laughs> <laughs> Name his name 
and he must speak saying thus, or to the same defect, ladies, or fair ladies, I would request you, I would wish you, I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble. Do you think I come hither as a lion with pity on my life? I'm a man as other men are, and tell him plainly he is the of the joyer. Well, it shall be so, but there is two hard things, which is to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Don't the moon shine that night we play our play? A calendar! 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 in a bush of thorns and say he comes to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story did meet through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man, their other, must present wall and let him have some plastic or some love or some rough curse about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper, whisper, whisper. Then all is well. Come, sit down and rehearse your parts. Uh, Pyramus, you begin. What hampered hopes but have we swaggering here? So close to the cradle of the fairy queen. What a plague! I'll be an honor. An actor, too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. And uh, uh, Thisbe, you stand forth. Thisbe! The flowers of Odious savor sweet. Odors. Odors. Odors savor sweet. So hath thy breath, my dearest Thisbe, dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. A stranger Pyramus than ever played here. <laughs> must I speak now? I <laughs> must you. Most pretty you Pyramus, most lovely white of you, come like red rose, and triumphant bride, most brisky jeweling, most lovely jewels, 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 and retire, make the Pyramus of his tomb. Nightless tomb, man. Wait, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. Why you speak all your part, cues and all? Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tire. As jewels, jewels, horse, and yet we're never tired. If I were fair to me, I were only nine. I love thee. You! Oh. <laughs> oh, me thinks me 
Miss Trish, you should have little reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, to say the truth, reason and love keep little company together nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one is wise. Is that one? Oh, not so neither. But I have wit enough to get out of this wood. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether that wit or no. I do love thee, therefore go with me. <laughs> I'll give thee fairies to the on me. Peas, blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed. <laughs> Dead for aught that I can tell. 
I pray you, tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more! Come! Oh, there is no following her here in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. <laughs> what hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the mothers in some true love sight. About the wood go swifter than the wind. Helena of Athens, seek thou find. All fancy sick she is and pale of cheer. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes before she does appear. I go, I go, look how I go. Swifter than an arrow from Tartar's <laughs> Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sink in apple of his eye when his love he doth despise. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus in the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairyland, <coughs> Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me pleading for a lover's feet. Lord, what fools these mortals be? Stand aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Little well two at once, who won? Why should you turn back to the boy's car? You're doing this, you're cutting more and more! These vows are hurrying. I had the judgment when to her I swore. No man in my mind now give her or to me she loves her and she loves not you. Oh, Helena! <laughs> Goddess, nymph, perfect, divine! To what shall I compare thy eyes? Crystal is muddy! Oh, how ripe and show thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting rub. Oh, let me kiss this princess, this seal of bliss. <laughs> oh, spite! Oh, hell! I stood your whole faith to the guilty for your merriment. If you were civil and you courtesy, you wouldn't do me that much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so. Hold up, Hermia, this you know I know. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will not. If ever I loved her, all that love is gone. Lysander! Look where thy love comes. Yonder is thy dear. Lysander found my dear. I thank it for leaving that sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should this then who love the press go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Fair Helena, what she has done me? Could not this make thee know that hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, you cannot be! No! She is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion a false sport in spite of me. Hermia, will you paint our love as subject to join with men and scorn you not for a friend? I am amazed by your words. I scorn you not, it seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and break my eyes and face, and made your other love Demetrius to call me goddess here for the wise and very precious philosophy? I understand not what you mean by this. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare you well, it is partly mine own fault. Which death or absence soon shall remedy that gentle Helena. I say I love thee more than he can do. Or that say so be plucked and prove it to you. Quick, come. Lysander, where to send all this? Why I'll bring that news, <laughs> or I'll be shed deep for a minute like a serpent. Why you grown so rude? What change is this? Sweet love. Thy love? Oh, head and purse and sense. Do you not jest? Yes, sooth, and so do you. What? Should I hurt her? <laughs> Do I hurt ah! you had death? Or do I hit her and I calm herself? What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me, wherefore are you not like Sandra? I, by my life, this not just that I do hate you. Love Helena. Oh, me! You shut up! You came for blossom! You think of love! Have you no modesty, no 
no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness. Bye, bye, you counterfeit, you puppet, you puppet. I perceive that she hath made compared to her statures. How low am I, thou painted maid, Paul? I'm not yet so low that my nails do not reach thy eyes. Gentlemen, let her not hurt me, let her not strike me. You perhaps would think that she is something lower than myself, that I could match her. Lower? Are you gay? You shall not have a now. You shall not harm thee. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and true. Though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again, let him know and let all. Let me come Can you guard the war? You witness? You fiend? You acorn? You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Oh, follow down there. Follow? Nay, I'll go with you cheek by jowl. I will not trust you. I no longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands and mine are quicker for a prey. My legs, though, are longer to run away. <laughs> This is thy negligence. <laughs> Believe me, King of Shadow, I mistook. Did not you tell me that I should know the man by the Athenia garments he hath on? Thou seest the lovers seek a place to fight. Oh, hi, Robin, overcast the night. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye. When they next wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless vision. I'll to my queen, beg her Indian boy. Then her charmed eyes I will release from monster's view, and all things shall be peace. My fair and lord, this must be done with haste. Make no delay. Up and down, up and down, I will lease them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Go and lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Here, villain, where art thou? I will be with this threat. Follow me then to plain her ground. Lysander, where dost thou hide thy head? Art thou there? Follow my boys. Abide me, thou nurse. Where art thou? Come hither. I am here. Nay, then thou mockest me. Now, Go thy way! Face this! Constraineth me to measure out my liking on this. <laughs> oh, weary night! Oh, long and tedious night! I'll paint thy hours, and sleep that shuts up sorrow's eyes. Steal me a while from kind own company. Yet but three. Come one more. Two of both kinds makes up four. Here she comes. <laughs> Cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad. <laughs> I can go further crawl. No further go. My loves can keep no pace with my desires. Here upon this bank I shall rest me until great death. <laughs> On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wickest, thou takest true delight in your sight of thy former lady's eye. Jack shall have Jill, not shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. <laughs> Come, sit thee down upon this flowery bed. While I thy amiable cheeks do coy, ah. and stick musk roses in thy sleek, smooth ah. head, and kiss thy fair large ears, my gentle joy. <laughs> Where's Peas Blossom? Ready! Oh. Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. <laughs> Where's 
Mistress Cobweb. Ready? Oh, Mistress Cobweb, good mistress. See a red hip tumblebee on top of a thistle. And good mistress, bring me the honey bag. <laughs> have care of the honey bag, break not. I'd be loath to have yon overflown with the honey bag, good mistress. <laughs> Where's Master Mustard Seed? Ready, what is your will? Oh, nothing good, monsieur, but to help cavalry cobweb to scratch. Ah. Uh, I must to the bar, for me thinks I am a marvelous hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass, that if my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongs and the bows. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. There is be gone, and be always away. <laughs> oh, how I love thee. How I don't love thee. Welcome, Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? But her dotage I do begin to pity, for meeting her of late behind the woods, seeking sweet sick favors for this hateful fool. I did upbraid her and fall out with her. She, in mild terms, begged my patience. I then did ask her for her changeling child, which straight she gave me. Now I have the boy. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. Now I'll release the fairy. Be as thou as thou as one to be. See as thou as thou as one to see. Now my Titania wake you, my sweet queen. <laughs> Wood, 
and I, in fury, hither followed, and fair Helena, in fancy, followed me. But, uh, my good lord, I want not by what power, but by some power it is my love to Hermia, melted as the snow, and all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I see Hermia, like a sickness did I loathe this food, but as in health come to my natural tone, now I do wish it, tear it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For at the temple, by and by, with us, the couple shall eternally be knit. Away with us to Athens, three by three, all the feast and great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see with pardon eye when everything seems double. And I have found Demetrius, like a jewel, my love. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems that we do sleep, we dream. D did not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my grandfather. And Hippolyta. Yea, and he bid us follow the temple. Why, then we are awake. <laughs> Let's follow him and by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> I had a dream, past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. Methought I was, there was no man can tell me. Methought I was and methought I had. <laughs> We would offer to say what we thought I had. I of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand unable to taste. His tongue to conceive. Nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream. <laughs> because it acts no bottom. <laughs> and I will sing it at the latter end of a play before the Duke. Peradventure, and to make it the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. <laughs> Tedious. 
For on all the play, there is not one word apt, one player fitted. That's tragical, my noble lord. It is. For the hero of this therein doth kill himself. <laughs> Which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made mine eyes water. The passion of loud laughter never shed. Uh, what is it that play it? Hard handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds. Till now. Uh, and uh, we will hear it. No, my noble lord. It is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in that intent. <laughs> I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and beauty tender it. Uh, go bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness overcharged, and duty in his service perishing. My gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Uh, let him approach. Goodwill that you should think we come not to offend, but with goodwill to show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our end. <laughs> <laughs> Consider that we come, but in this spite we do not come as minding to content you. Our true intent is all for your delight. We are not here, that you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show you shall know all that you are like to know. Indeed, he hath played on his prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. <laughs> uh, who is next? Oh. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show. But wonder on till truth makes all things plain. That this man is Pyramus. If you would know this beauteous lady, Thisbe is certain. Uh, this man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall, that vile wall which did the lover sunder, and through walls chink, poor souls, they were content to whisper. At the which let no man wonder. This man, with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn, Presenteth moonshine, for if you will know, by moonshine did the lovers think no scorn at Ninus' tomb to meet, there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. <laughs> And as she fled, her mantle she did fall. Which lion vile with bloody mouth did stay? <laughs> Anon, Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, did find his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. <laughs> and Thisbe tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. <laughs> For all the rest, let lion, moonlight, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. <laughs> In this same interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present 
a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think, that had in it a, a cranny nook or, or chink, through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often, very secretly. And this loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this, the cranny is, right and, and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. <laughs> oh, grim-looked night! Oh, night with you so black! Oh, night which ever art when day is not! Oh, night, oh, night! Alack, 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 alack! <laughs> I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, Oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall that stands between her father's ground and mine. And thou, oh, wall, oh, sweet, oh, lovely wall, show me thy cheek to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Jove, shield thee well for this. But what see I? No thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. <laughs> oh, wall, the love that hast not heard my moans apart in my fair pyramus and me. When Terry lives and mother kiss my stone, the stones of my men tear it up in me. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. <laughs> Thisbe! My love, thou art, my love. Think? think what thou wilt. I am thy lover's grace, and like Lymander am I trusty still. And like Helen to the fates me kill. Not shaftless to Procris was so true. A shaftless to Procris, I to you. Oh, kiss me through the whole of this vile wall. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hall at her lips at all. Wilt thou at Ninny's too meet me straightway? Time life. Time death and come without delay. <laughs> thus have I wall, my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away and doth go. <laughs> Eyes, do you see? How can it be? 
Oh, dainty duck! Oh, dear. <laughs> Thy mental good? What? Stained with blood? Approach ye furies fell! Oh, fates, come, come! Cut thread and thrum! Quail, crush, conclude, and dwell! Beshrew my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore nature did sell lions frame? Since lion vile hath here deflowered, my dear, which is no, no, which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer, out tears confound, out sword, and wound that pap of Pyramus, I that left pap, where heart doth hop. Thus die I, thus, thus, thus! <laughs> now am I fled, now am I dead. My soul is in the sky, tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. <laughs> now die, 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 die.
If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumber here, while these visions did appear. And this week an idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. So, good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Godspeed, be well, drive safe, and take your leave. Thank you.